Okay, Brian, I, I just start streaming now because, um, you know, we're going to look like uh, very much um, people <laughs> that uh, don't know what they're doing because, yeah, totally unprofessional, extremely unprofessional hey. because um, but actually uh, I imagined this to be way more simple, but actually, you know, as it is, it is oh, not. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that's, uh, that's how it goes. I, yeah, I usually I leave so much time every time I start Space Couch because I've gotten so used to this sort of thing. That's okay. Oh, I see your wonderful visages. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, there's me. Now I can poke your face. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, okay, I think this is a better mix. Yeah, but please come in in a bit, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, do we actually have already people on the stream? I don't know. I mean, we're a little bit late, but we're going to figure this out, right? People drawn in late, usually. Yeah, as always. Yeah, like yes, me. Yes, 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 yes. Always late. Yeah. We have some people in, we heard. So! Oh, we have Faderhead. Oh, Surgeon's here. Rock Surgeon's here. That's fucking amazing. Ooh. And an X is here, but we can't see her yet because she's actually over there typing faster than I could. So, wow, wow, beautiful people, welcome to uh, a show that is actually, or that was actually way more difficult for me to get together, for us to get together than uh, we ever imagined because uh, we had an amazing amount of contributions. Uh, we, we have two guests that uh, we will introduce uh, just in a minute. Um, well, uh, we read poetry. Um, we read it out loud in our own room. Um, we uh, read lots of it and we wrote things down about it. Um, we talked about that stuff. We got videos of that. They look all very different and, and they had different audio and, and you know, and then we wanted to, to simulate at least that we are sitting in a room. That is why uh, Brian, whose uh, face I'm poking here, uh, is this here right in between of us uh, on, on this uh, beautiful cross. We sort of um, crucified him for our digital <laughs> sins. Um, and, uh, uh, and well, suicide commander. we got in total way too much material than I expect that we can actually go through in the one and a bit hour that we are planning to do this tonight. Um, and uh, well, for today, I actually don't know. Um, I guess for Brian, it's more like in the morning. Um, and uh, yeah, well, in this context, welcome to the very first Isolation Rave Poetry Slam, where we are going to talk about industrial lyrics and where we are going to free them from the context of music, movie samples uh, and whatever else. Images, sweat, beer. Everything, Atmosphere. actually. Yeah, to, to run this properly, I will first like, I would first like to introduce my extremely amazing guests, which is here, Christian Wiesenberg. Um, oh, hello. Who? Who's making this who? Oh, uh, now, I, can, I, can, I can I can I can simulate uh, applause from far away. That's not isolating enough. That's not isolating enough. Uh, people. <laughs> um, uh, Christian is uh, uh, do doing things in this uh, beautiful, totally dead scene for like I don't know too many years now, yeah. running uh, beautiful projects uh, such as uh, Rotasand. Um, and uh, uh, poking his fingers into all sorts of other things that we are not going to talk about now. Um, and my other co-host, Brian Graupner. Uh, Hi! <laughs> language expert, revoker of English licenses <laughs> and uh, world famous Mortal Kombat reenactor. Um, yes, sir. So, uh, uh, with uh, uh, these uh, two people that you don't know from the stream usually, I feel like uh, we became the kind of paperweight uh, intellectual powerhouse that we need to actually run this. And on top of that, 
we have currently not on the screen, and I actually do not know why. Hello. Hey. Hey. So, tonight, we actually have a plan for what we are doing, and um, and this is not the plan. <laughs> this is the plan. That's the plan. This is the plan. So, actually, we did uh, point one. Welcome and intro. Brian and Krishan, I, I sort of expect you now to applaud at home. Yes. Just, just applaud at your screen. Do it for me. And uh, uh, we are going to uh, talk about different uh, tropes, different concepts that uh, X and me found in the past days when we were intensely reading industrial lyrics that, that we figured. Um, A true academic work, y'all. And. Um, <laughs> And, and I'll, I'll quickly go through these, right? Um, first of all, we are going to uh, talk about why pessimism is a positive personality trait. Um, we will talk about uh, while rubbing your sweaty torso over another man's uh, sweaty torso as a man becomes slightly less gay when you're at the same time screaming about muscle and hate. Um, we are uh, going to uh, talk about why we actually don't like women. Um, and... <laughs> <laughs> and we are finally uh, going to talk about why words, in the end, are absolutely unimportant and meaningless. Um, and uh, that you can actually have all the words that you like and enjoy total freedom as long as you can give people the idea that they are in an environment where everybody thinks that God is dead and we can burn the church over there right now. Um, and in this context, I would actually like to start right away with pessimism as a personality trait and run. Oh, Ixa, you're going to do that. So here our contribution brought to you in the Stadtpark of Gelsenkirchen by the wonderful dance floor gladiators. One of them at least. At least one of them. Das wird richtig, das wird richtig kurz. Ja, weißt du, kurz ist eigentlich auch erstmal gut. So. Fang an, wenn du willst, ich roll. Alles klar. You like this track? Well, it says a lot about you. Fuck your ego. Fuck your scene. Fuck your fashion. Fuck your lies. Fuck your trend. Fuck your style. Fuck your music. Fuck industrial. Perfect. Thank you. This was um, Dance for Gladiators. Krishan. Um, I, I think there is, uh, I mean, I think, I think this was aesthetic perfection, right? Yes. And did, Combi Christ. And, and Combi Christ. Did, did you produce this or did Andy do that? Um, I guess Daniel produced it. Um, most likely I mastered it. Um, I guess Daniel produced it. I guess it was a B-side of one of his, I don't know. Um, ah, I forget all the time, I forget the names of aesthetic perfection singles at that time. What? Daniel, yeah, yeah, it was it was a B-side of Daniel's single, and I guess it was exactly meant um, to bring up that topic of industrial pop in opposite to industrial. So it was more uh, so, like so an in, 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 in so linguistic so message about him being finding distance to this overall clicheish thing by being clicheish in itself. It, it, it's very meter and twisted in itself. But, but isn't, isn't, that, <laughs> isn't, that, <laughs> isn't that slightly... Um, I feel like that, that, that's an... I don't understand that. I guess no one is understanding it in total. Brian, is that it? where it was supposed to go? Because like, when I first heard this track, I thought, like, okay, that's, that's a pretty goddamn dope song. And if I could do half that, that would be a good day for me. But I wasn't a hundred percent sure on on the goal. Like obviously the lyrics are tongue in cheek, and he's trying to achieve some sort of irony. But 
is there is there an honesty layer to it that I'm also supposed to be picking up? Or did I just lose I, everybody? I, I guess he... I guess it was released as a B-side from one of mm -hmm. the more more popular popular singles. Just... Whoa! So, yay! Now we got oh, a bit good. more video stuff in it. Um, I think there's a bit of an irony and a bit of an honest part in it. Okay. So, so I think it was kind of um, I've I've said everything about this kind of industrial harshness with uh, Schadenfreude and, mm -hmm. and the albums Violent Emotion and the one before that and and now I can go away with away from it I'm 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 done with that mm -hmm. kind of cliche interesting um, um, I, I guess it didn't work on on the scale that people or someone understood it because it became kind of a rock solid club hit as far as I know <laughs> right. especially in the US this, and this, UK. this always happens right yeah this always well, happens of course I come, I guess you've got some experience with Straft runs about it too. I mean, me neither. But don't um, you sort of welcome that too? Like, yeah, I'm going to put out a fuck industrial song, but if it turns into a club hit, that's okay. Isn't that sort of like where you start? Or was that not the goal at all? I guess it's not the goal at all. I guess we didn't start okay. with it at all. Um, I'm sorry. It, I'm it, still it, waiting. It, might be, an, it, it might be an idea that it's better to fill uh, four, four minutes or something of uh, airtime in a club with with that music uh, instead with music with this even even crap on the idea level <laughs> <laughs> that's where i come in I, <laughs> no crap. that's I mean, not true i mean i mean this this this, this essentially happened to us back then when we, when, we, when we did straftanz you know um it was oh are we frozen <coughs> oh, oh no but our hearts are broken but but put, put on <laughs> <the> <laughs> just put on another camera maybe <laughs> Oh, we've gone. Oh, oh, oh we're gone. gone full freeze. Everything, everything is fucked. Can, we can, we can gotta you get go? an ice break here up in here. Totally oh, no, frozen. no, no. Ace just changed the camera. I might need a proper screen shaver because my oh, hair is. So. We, we're so frozen, we've all turned into gothsicles. Hey, oh. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, we're going for uh, stand up. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. We, we, we got actually this for, for stand up instead of, uh, in case of we, we, want to, we want to read something, oh, right? So, so uh, uh, we, we put up the stand up camera and then we wanted to change to the f between the frozen camera and the stand up camera and we even tested it. And um, well, we can both so, go there. But but you know, um, I, I guess I guess we need to we need to go into full stand-up mode now, because uh, because everything even, else is frozen. I guess it's even adding some layer of seriousity. Uh, yeah, actually, you see? it it looks oh. much more serious now. Except for we can't see Brian anymore. That's um, true. Yeah. But it's more like a presenter mode now. <laughs> um, yeah. Ah, we need the menu. Uh, I mean, in the end, this is whole thing about, you know, uh, 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 fucking industrial. I mean, we, we tried it hard as a Straftanz. This is whole this whole thing about, you know, there's a Straftanz in that club and there's a Straftanz in that club was actually about, you know, that, that stuff not being very good. And when we later on did Tanz kaputt was euch kaputt macht, it was very much about like, you know, oh, n now we said something about all the very negative things that we can talk about. And now we don't need to do that anymore because we all have it in one song, um, uh, you know, with 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 terrorists and cannibals and uh, and and everything else that you might want or not or actually don't want uh, but but uh, you know whenever you're doing it you are suddenly producing club hits without getting too serious <laughs> <In it. laughs> it's always the same problem with if you make track songs whatever art about being against something you still need to reach people to spread your message. Absolutely. So, so you're always caught in this kind of, of, of semantic trap of, of doing something you don't like <laughs> to, to, to Percy Flash it or whatever, <laughs> and then getting positive feedback from it that it works, like even as good or nearly as good as the original thing you're criticizing. 
which is kind of fun. Of course, it is, and, and it makes you feel whatever intellectually superior. But it also got a super bitter taste. <laughs> yeah. Also, you know, even even when it totally fails, you can still pretend that you were clever about of course, it, right? Of course, of <laughs> course. You, you have no way of losing it as long as you are in in into an uh, irony thing. As long as you're into an irony mode, you can't lose anything. Which is weird because it doesn't make you vulnerable at all. No, no, no. It doesn't. It, this, this, this is exactly the point. And that's a contradiction of art. This, this is the contradiction of art. If you are, if you are not vulnerable, then it's pointless it. to do it. It was all pointless. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't go that far, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it maybe was worth spending the time just to come up to that conclusion. Yes, likely. And perhaps everybody needs to make this conclusion by, uh, for themselves. And I guess it's the same with fuck industrial. It's like it, it's, it, it, it's being mirrored against itself as a track and against the scene. And but it's still working in that concept because negativity is a positive trade. Negativity is a positive trade. In, in this context, X, can you maybe roll kaput? This is a contribution. <coughs> the German the horn. Terrorismus, Kannibale, Serienmörder, Kettenbrief, George und Saddam und Bin Laden, Glaubenskrieg und Ganterzieg, Folterqualen, Höllenpein, Knopfloch Rose, stell dich ein. Sprengstoff, Mode, Eitelkeit, Inzest, Puppe, seid bereit. Muschkel, starke Manneskraft, Frau und Kinder, abgeschafft. Anklage, Betroffenheit, Oberflächen, Einigkeit, Leo Fisch und Lexikon, keine Ahnung mehr davon. Klima, Amo, Genozid, Atta, Greenpeace. Lauf doch mit, tanz kaputt, was euch kaputt macht. Tanz kaputt, was euch kaputt macht. Yeah, I guess that's exactly the point, right? It is. We, we, we tried hard. <laughs> and in retrospect, we failed. We, <laughs> didn't, we, we did not overdrive it enough, but... How, how, how would you how would you still overdrive no this more? I have no idea. It, it, uh, it's I mean, very dense because it's. I haven't listened to the lyrics for whatever ages. I was the decades or something. Uh, it's it's super hard to criticize something like even a scene or a social group or something, where criticizing everything, including itself, it's part of the yes. conventions. This, this, is, this is actually just like creating feedback, right? It is. I mean, I mean, you're, 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 you're putting, you're putting the shit in on top again. This is essentially what we did with Straftanz. You know, it came out, and then we put it in on the top again. And 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 since since everybody's really used to, you know, taking in shit. I mean, whatever it is, like eating people or whatever, and 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 processing it in some sort of way. You know, you can't criticize this whole this whole machinery, this whole art form by doing exactly the same thing. Perhaps we should have talked about things that we like. Yeah, but it's a dope track. Like it the it the track came out like super good. So I mean clearly some effort happened when you were making this criticism. Is that is that not the case? Yeah, of course the track was dope, but you know, now we freed the lyrics from the track. Okay. And without and without the track it's just the lyrics and then it's essentially you know shit in shit <laughs> out. okay <I> plus <laughs> gravity <laughs> and density <laughs> yes, yes yes actually it adds density you know yeah of course of course but piling up shit you're adding weight and gravity and result and, in density and, and, so. and you have and you have all the individual uh, you know uh, pellets of, of of shit that that you collected the grains. It, it's all so in, in one track and, and you actually you know make it a whole Oh wow! It's 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 shit strata is it, the the the, the motif. Wow! Whoa! Th th that's deep, Brian. Yeah, well, you know, that's uh, watch for uh, shit strata coming soon to Metropolis. Our new album's coming out in a month. <laughs> <laughs>
It's gonna be you, Chad. Yeah, yeah. We'll get Krishan to just do the work. It'll be fine. That's okay. Yeah, yeah, that nice. works. I'm, I'm, I'm used to be good. abused like that. <laughs> 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 you add yeah. shit to my colors. Mm. Good thing that music isn't an olfactoric experience usually. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Professor Wesenberg over here with the. the well, on the other hand, I have to. I, I, I don't think that I'm at the moment smelling. I'm smelling that bad, but. No! <laughs> It's just an um, to, to, synthetic to, idea. Since, since, since we are rambling about all of that stuff, uh, we also have a contest going on. Um, we are going to uh, put, oh, it's, it's already, uh, there's already a link um, uh, in the chat. There's a context where you are forwarded to a Google form. In this Google form, you are going to find a couple of tasks for you and uh, when you send us this, uh, us this Google form you will even get a copy of that and um, we will judge it like hmm? and and after we judged all of you thoroughly and and figured out that you are all bad people um, we will find the two worst of you and send you prizes um, among these are uh, going to be like um, pointless things that are signed though um, and other pointless things that are maybe not signed, but uh, they're pointless nevertheless. And I promise you, you will love them. And talking about bad smells, I would like to actually forward to trope two, which is rubbing your sweaty torso as a man over another man's sweaty torso, smelly or not, is less gay when shouting things about like uh, muscle and and uh, hate and mandy grunts. Oh, oh, oh do, 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 do we have to do we have a do we have a conserve one or do we need to read now actually? Oh, we need to read oh, actually. We, we need to read actually. Actually, we we uh, we, we said. Um, X did something pretty, pretty awesome today that left me pretty impressed because um, what, what she was doing here in this room was uh, she was analyzing Nitsa app songs um, and, uh, and, and she created like semantic fields from them by not only writing down the individual words but also all of the different grunts. Um, we are at the moment working on uh, on, on statistical data on the amount of grunts uh, so to make this all countable and uh, you know quantity sometimes sometimes matters um, in in this context we have lyrics and uh, I would like to ask my amazing co-host Krishan to read them to us I might start with a reading um of Nitsar or Nitsarab. <laughs> no one is too sure about how to pronounce it correctly, actually, including them. Um, the track is called Join in the Chant. It's a no chanting edition. Lies, gold, guns, fire, gold, judge. Guns fire muscle and hate. Muscle lies. Books burn fire. Judge gold guns fire muscle and hate. Muscle join in the chant. Forces machine. Join in the chant. Force is machine. Uh, uh, oh. <laughs> Our theory in this context during the last week was um, 
if you are removing all of these lyrics, you know, you do the, the this thing, the whole different, the, the, you know, not, not this way, but the other way around, and, and you're removing the lyrics from the music, it's more like techno then, right? Actually, Nancy Rap has been techno all the way anyway. It's back from those days when techno had a lot of Ks between the E and the N. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, but it was never three, right? It was more than three. Uh, yeah, but but three we don't do. Okay, we don't do it that harsh. <laughs> we don't do no, no, more no. than three K techno. Three K techno is wrong. This yeah. sounds too racist. Yeah. Um, and uh, but it is. Right? It is. Yeah, yeah. Technically, of course, like like most electronic music, in a way, has some techno-ish context when it get a certain amount of danceiness especially when it was developed in the whatever 80s. Um, but, um, you know, in, in, in context of, of, of a Night's Rap show... Uh, yeah, then it becomes we, even we more techno. We, 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 do, we do not agree upon that, that we are dancing to techno, right? Um, I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I do, of course I do, especially with the um, latest shows uh, having n like one or two actual breaks to applaud or something in it and then the rest of it runs through like like a so, like a mixed set okay it it's it's very technoish um but uh in I, a good way of being technoish I, so. I i never i never i never quite quite felt like that uh, uh people felt like or were comfortable to say that this is techno when you for example put this in context of like familientreffen or something like that yeah i mean then um, of course not we, uh, we 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 all know the great moments when when people are telling me uh, i mean i know my great moments when telling when people are telling me at a club that i that i'm supposed to put down my hands because we are not a love parade <laughs> <laughs> yeah but that's this this other whatever um, kind of hedonistic side of techno music um i guess with night syrup we all, we all always had something out of this a blend of punk and funk music and that's what they even tell themselves so 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 they got out of this idea of of electronic body music as as a dance music as as, as this body thing like a physical action transferred to dance in a way of an aggressive form of dancing so it's it's very forcing and and definitely it is it is technoish of course, but, but even Fuck Industrial is kind of a technoish track if you take away the lyrics and just spread it out a bit. If, if, you, if you ask me, uh, Nights of Rap is, is, uh, is, is pretty pure in terms of being techno. It I mean, is. I mean uh, l listen, listen to some of the remixes. I mean, yeah, of course, yeah, then it uh, becomes super obvious. Yeah. Because they're putting things in context there. Yes. Of course, because that's one of the good things about remixes is you put yourself in context of what you want to be sometimes <laughs> in a way yes. it's something like yeah, yeah like, like you see yourself in in this whatever uh, uh, cosmos of genres or something but um how how um, how is it actually uh, with with people uh, listening here do, do you feel like that you're that you're dancing to techno when you're dancing to nitsa rap i mean i'm most of the time do <laughs> so, no. uh, the electronic body music uh, ASMR experience, uh, Christian, there are rumors on the internet that uh, people actually want this. So, what do you say about that? What's ASMR? Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I am old, you see. Ah, okay. Ah, ah, you, oh. you know, it's, it's, uh, um, b b people are listening to things where... Uh, you know, you are. Now really we put in a paid phone line for this kind of. Um, yeah, exactly. And, and you're. And very whitish Nights of Rap. And you'll, be, and you'll be really close to the microphone. Of course, I'm really close and to the microphone. You talk so you get really a proper P, like from uh, Tom York. Tom you know, York's P's are awesome. The, 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 the feeling when, when, when people are talking directly into your ear. Yeah, we know really it. Really we know it. Really we know it. We know it. But it wasn't gay because we were talking about EBM. Correct. Then it's that not gay. It wasn't gay. Then, then it's yeah. absolutely not gay. Yes, because that's the trope, actually. It's not the trope about techno and EBM and the chimera of that designed sub niche genre scene. Um, 
because they were more about um, masculine and muscleful people, not like me, but like Jörg or Brian. Yeah, more like Brian, actually. More like Brian. Rubbing. Yeah. We can just virtually rub Brian, but... <laughs> <laughs> but then we go back to this thing of um, smiling. Brian, can you flex for everybody to demonstrate a real man? <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. muscle. No hate, muscle. No hate. I'm happy to no be here. No hate, muscle. Isolation rave. Uh, but 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 getting back on the trope. Of course, most dance music or a lot of dance music is coming out of an of a gay concept. Like like early dance dance nightclubs especially in the US or something, were like places where gay people can go and be what, like they are in the 70s, 80s. Yeah, but, but in this context, you know, uh, pure hedonism and being happy about something is actually counterculture. It is, which is weird, isn't it? Uh, no, it's actually not weird because, you know, people want to be happy about something and then they do a counterculture. On the other way around, you can do counter counterculture in order to be angry. Yep, you can con do counterculture against everything, against something that is called a norm. I feel like I understood something, but I'm not quite sure. It's a slight difference between norm and being normal. So I think if you got a wider scale of what's being normal, you are counterculture because you are doing something against a statistical thought norm that's deep isn't it <laughs> it is <laughs> brian are you actually ever against something or are you Am more I like a for something person um no i mean musically you're talking about or, or we could just take it in that context because that's sort yeah of absolutely i think show. Because I, I know you're mostly from for, for musical context, not, not as a person that I hang out every day with or something like that. <laughs> well, it's interesting. The Gothicals was generally a... There's parody elements, but it's generally a nod to industrial music. It's a, sort of a celebration of the whole thing. Um, and, you know, there's... I had to spin off a side project or two to sort of delve into anything negative it's not really my go-to move i'm a generally as far as music goes four person things you know i'm 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 into uh video games and as christian knows otters uh so <laughs> it's it's a little bit more of a four i mean i'm sorry to bring it back to myself but it just seems to resonate with what you're talking about that the the gospels was initially attempt to be like yo i've never been in a war and i'm not a vampire but like I really like River City Ransom for the Nintendo. So like I'm gonna be for that. Just, just sort of answer. <laughs> That's hope, a bit missed it, but it's something I hope that answers your this. question. I, th I think I think there's a lot of point for, uh, to, to that. I mean, I mean, the, the, the first the first thing that that I ever listened to from from you was was indeed English license, and and, <laughs> yeah. uh, and and I found it to be absolutely hilarious. Also, I still oh, don't thanks, understand man. how you could put that much lyrics in one in one track. I mean, well, this, I'm, this I'm is crazy. Thinking. But um, the yeah, English license was that was that was a lot because like, you know, you discover this sort of stuff in, in high school age and uh, like um, these these bands are like, you know, gods to me. And then they'll, they'll say something like your love is like a combat. And I'm like, do you, you have so many American fans? Just call somebody and figure it out. And uh it eventually just crystallized down into song format uh, when I was uh, for the first album. It came back to bite me in the ass, though, but uh, not Is so it? much. Like, oh, I, well, no, I think I told the story that um, I got an email from uh, Hesh Billis, uh, who you'll know as the 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 progenitor of Project Pitchfork, and he wanted me to do guest my dad. Vocals. <laughs> you wanted me to do guest folks on uh, a track for Santa Hates You, one of his side projects. And I'm like freaking out, like, holy fucking shit. Ah, this is the best day of my life. And um, and then so I'm like, yeah, once I figure out it's actually him and not one of my friends just punking me, right? And then like two weeks later, he writes back and goes, Brian, what means English license? And I'm like, fuck, because uh, I forgot <laughs> that I wrote that song. Uh, and so I'm like, I'm like, like for a few days, I'm like, oh no, I fucked up. 
and uh, then I like I wrote him back. And he's like, "Can I still do the track?" And he's like, "Yes, but only if I can also add my bad German grammar." And I'm like, "Ah, he was just he was just kidding the whole time." So yeah, we. <laughs> I thought it. I thought it. Uh, yeah, 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 but, but, but seriously, if, if you would have fucked up in, in this situation and, and Peter would have turned out to, to, to have this little humor, you wouldn't really have fucked up, right? Oh, it's a good point. It's a good yeah. point. I guess it's some of that uh, that safety and irony you were talking about earlier. But no, Project Pitchfork's hilarious. And uh, yeah, that it, I got a story out of it, to be sure. And a song. A and a song. Actually, more than one. That's how we do. Efficient. <laughs> Super efficient. <laughs> I got that German efficiency going, so you know. Uh, nah. Well, what, 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 what's good? Actually, you're very, you're very uh, invisible all the time. Why is this actually? I'm very invisible. Mm, yeah, of course you're doing a lot of stuff. And I think, oh, um, Brian, you made a very good point about being pro something instead of being against something. That's what? pretty fucking great. I mean, it's not really a decision. I don't. That's just sort of where I am, kind of like just naturally. I mean, I think it's fine to be against something. I think that's great. There's a lot to be against. But if you're just asking where my sort of barometer is naturally calibrated, it's it's just to be, you know, here are some animals that I like and I can get excited about. <laughs> <laughs> like otters. Yeah, but it's actually like like a different mode or something. If you if you mm. create something out of being against something, which is then a form of pressure, you're you're letting out. Or if, mm -hmm. you, or if you create something because you're pro something because you want to put something out of you yeah it's it's it gonna a put a different spin on it <laughs> yeah but i guess uh, this is actually pretty much what's happening right yeah it is that's a bit like like this different in the beginning that we had um, of fuck industrial and the accompanying a side which i forgot what it is um uh, with Daniel, like like this A side was kind of a pro statement for for his idea of a progress in in a scene music context, and then fucking Dexter was this anti thing. And I guess if you sum it up, it it didn't work in a club, but on a live basis, it worked very well on on the pro side of it. I think it's interesting. I need to think about it a bit further, and maybe in a native tongue. Thinking is thinking hard. About it, Thinking is pro. I'm pro thinking. <laughs> I'm absolutely pro thinking. <laughs> but um, this, 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 this leaves, this leaves in, for, for, for me a really, um, this leaves for me a really interesting question to, uh, to some degree because um, uh, this is actually uh, this, this, this is a trope again that, that we figured. Um, we seem to really uh, enjoy music where we are talking about stuff uh, that we can universally agree that nobody likes it uh, mm -hmm. right I mean uh, um, and, and, and it's not it's not even stuff you know that is in some sort of way um, about um, uh, some sort of an activism to, to, to be against something like I'm against the war because war is terrible uh, but um, you know, uh, there, there, there's, there, there's so many tracks where we are like talking about uh, serial killers from the 70s that killed like a lot of people, and, uh, and 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 then and then we make music about it, and then we talk about that. Why why are we actually doing this? And uh, and people are talking about stuff like, yeah, well, we can't remain silent about this issue. And um, and and then I sometimes ask myself, um, actually, uh, why? Um, because um, um, I, I, I still I still remember when I asked Tom why they were now making a song about the Zodiac Killer because I, I think they had they had this this song about the Cannibal of Rotenburg before that and, and then later on there was also I mean the the, the the Rotenburg Cannibal thing that was at least in 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 our time but I'm not even sure whether I was born when the Zodiac the Zodiac Killer was was murdering. I don't know, it was in the 70s? No, he's like in the 60s or 50s. 60s or even, right? Yeah, he's old. Uh, and, 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 still, and still we are, you know, like, it's, 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 it's a little bit like, um, like uh, uh, this, this whole thing of, uh, you know, uh, fun fair, uh, scary rides. I don't know how you call them in, in English. You, you, you know? Yeah, I got you. 
Yeah. Ha haunted houses or something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and and uh, it's it's not for real because of that you can actually do it. Because if it would be for real, you wouldn't want it, right? Uh, because uh, in in a way, uh, I I ask myself quite often in in this context, and I think uh, also, also also with Christian, like um, uh, okay. We, we now talked about um, the Holocaust in the song that, that we were listening to. And now I totally feel like having another drink and grab someone's, I don't know, be like, oh, hello, uh, can I buy you a drink? I just watched dead people on the video screen. Um, <laughs> and, and, and I found this to be called sort of a, a little bit uh, counterintuitive, to be honest. Um, Christian, you need to come over. I'm, to not, my, I'm not so used to, 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 to camera positions. So yeah, also the, 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 the camera screen. positions are all fucked up in some sort of way. Ah, see, see now, now, now we're we sort of like... And, um, <clears throat> and, and, very, and very much in this context, uh, you know, uh, we have like... Oh, there's the camera. Uh, we, have like, we have like tracks where you're like... Um, uh, th 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 there's one in particular that actually falls into that trope and also into uh, quite a couple of other tropes, uh, which is the masterpiece uh, and amazing club hit, Bind, Torture, Kill by Suicide Commando. And um, I found it to be really interesting uh, uh, to read this one. And because of that, I'll read it for you now. And we'll go to the reading position. Assume the position. I'm totally assuming position to read. So pretty, so frail. I watch your body turning pale. So fragile, so weak. I didn't want to be that creep. Soul stripper, soul ripper, I bind her legs, excruciate her. Start bleeding, stop breathing. I take your life. I am defeating. Bind, torture, and kill. I think I can get some applause for that, right? Yes, 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 you can. You get some very busy applause. And the, yeah, <laughs> kick, kick drum applause. Kick drum applause. Kick drum applause. From the heart. So, so this 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 was this was one that really struck me up because I, I listened to it in in the club for so many times and it was sort of cool, right? And, and then and then you read it and and I was a little bit like, Jesus Christ, what the fuck? I mean, this 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 is this is not how you're getting laid, right? Maybe it is. <laughs> can, can can you tell about any sort of successes no. that you had in that context? No, I didn't wrote the song, so I, I can't do any but, but, measurements and controlling on it. Um, but I personally Sam. feel it, it also fits into this um, um, scheme of pros, cons, and norm and normality. Uh, so, so Sammy, there's a lot. Fedor oh. had just asked in the chat if there are actual lyrics in this because he did not know. Enlightenment has been achieved. <laughs> Ooh, level up. Obviously, <laughs> lyrics in it. I mean, someone was yelling something, right? Apparently, it's he even didn't rather know. undistorted in that particular track, as far as I remember. There are a lot of more Suicide Commando tracks where you don't get the lyrics so mm. clear delivered. Uh, uh, Sammy is usually the one that 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 you know listens to, to to lyrics and stuff like that and i'm the person you know that never listens to lyrics and and claims you know i i don't know what he said or they said or whatever i mean uh that, that, that that's that that's weird um mr head um uh, i i'm i'm surprised uh, how, how could that happen that that you were not i mean you, you were usually listening but m maybe it's too much distortion or i don't know or m maybe you were busy I don't think that much distortion is on it. There's a, there is distortion or distorting whatever effects on it, of course, because they're always on Johann's vocals, um, but but not as harsh as, the, as we. Uh, Brian, get it in did, all did you ever notice the lyrics of "Bind, Torture, Kill"? Well, sure, sure. Um, 
I mean, that's sort of the the suicide commando ethos, right? This murder kabuki uh, that I'm not sure if if it's an attempt to sort of uh, supplant a power fantasy or or just see if you can transcribe uh, certain emotions into a song context. It's the kind of thing I would never write, but I, I mean, at this stage in the game, I think he's got his his sort of ethos down in terms of. Uh, I don't think it's a character, but these Suicide Commando songs are uh, achieve. What do they achieve? They they achieve this sort of theatrical goal. I don't know. What do you think? I'm not sure about that, and and I think I think this is this is among the things in in this context that I actually understood least ever. Yes, that's the same with me. So I I, I never spun that track as a DJ, as as a bunch of other tracks too, because I because I s still can't get over the idea that I'm in a club where people, whether they're goth and hating everything apart from themselves and their scene, even they hate the scene. Um, they are still on the dance floor, kind of enjoying time, um, buying drinks and try to get laid what, or being social or something, what the usual stuff is, or the usual mode in a club. Um, and, and, and then you're listening to that lyrics um, that doesn't distract people from, from enjoying their time. Uh, I, I still think that's kind of super disturbing to me, but maybe mm. then I'm too too full of norms or something <laughs> or, or <laughs> maybe too bearded may, maybe too bearded too but um that's because i look shit without a beard so um, th th that's not true but how do you know i know i know you've made with, with much less beard actually yeah, with, with less beard but not with no but, beard but not, not not entirely uh, uh, I, no, I mean no, no. The, the, the stuff that you have now going on is more like marxism right yeah it is but that's a question of mindset not of beards um, th that's true Beard helps, <laughs> and um, but but I also had the impression that um, um, Brian put out a, about a bit of a megalomanian mindset in it about power fantasies and stuff like that. It, 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 well, it's like an it's like a super overdriven uh, fetish fantasy combined with a life role play idea or something. Yeah, I mean it's it's done in the first person, right? So you're sort of there's at least some onus on the the songwriter, some wish by the songwriter, or the the whoever's singing the song that's in the first person to sort of take the place of the serial killer character, and um, the I mean maybe the artistic value comes in like now I'm channeling these bizarre serial killer type emotions through uh, Cubase or whatever. Um, and the, the the outcome of that that transformation is what you're now listening to. If I if I remember, I'd read the um, corresponding whatever merchandise T-shirts or something listed seven seven serial killers or something, starting off with Jeffrey Dahmer or something. I don't um, even remember this. Um, um, so, so I guess it's written out of the perspective of of one of those serial killer listed, or maybe of all yeah. of them. Um, I mean, um, I, I remember, I remember the situation uh, uh, many years ago, uh, where um, where we actually had a, a killer case in the scene, um, yes. and and uh, you know um, back then uh, we we had this we had this thing. Um, there was there was a couple uh, in Witten yes. of all places, which is not far from Bochum, where uh, at that point the I don't know one of one of the largest. Uh, uh, goth parties uh, of, of Germany was going on. It was like I don't know, the Empire of Darkness, uh, and uh, and and these these were people that were showing up there regularly, and um, and and then and then a couple of interesting things happened. First of all, uh, they they invited um, a workmate home, um, and uh, uh, killed him with uh, 666 hammer blows. Um, after that, claimed in court that Satan told them to do it. And, uh, uh, and and well, uh, un until they actually landed in court, they had like I don't know, some sort of a, some sort of a road trip to Ger to Germany in, in a Mercedes Benz with a Wormscut logo on it and a sticker on the back that said uh, Cadaver Verwaltung uh, 
Kadaververwertungsgesellschaft, äh, yeah. Bunker 7, I, I don't know, some, some, some one's got lyrics, stuff, uh, things like that. And, um, and, uh, uh, and then suddenly it happened. You had killers in the scene, actually, and everybody was in this moment really, really eager to distance themselves, except for Wormscott. Wormscott issued a series of energy drinks um, yep. that uh, had uh, that that had like I don't know. Uh, they he even had a, uh, an advertising slogan yeah. that was "Damit sie auch morgen noch kraftvoll zuschlagen können." Yes, um, which, which I think is, was rather great. And, yeah, and I, I think so too. Uh, yeah, um, to, to translate. So if, if, if you play with whatever, yeah, not, not just for the sake of it, uh, if you play with the devil or, or some things like this, if you play with those topics, um, then you need to put into consideration that there might be whatever abused or. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I, I mean, um, I, I think I think if I would have been Wormscott in this situation, I, I wouldn't have acted much differently because of course I wouldn't feel like that you know I have some sort of a, a responsibility in this context and I would uh, even though this is really sinister at least try to pull a joke over that because essentially this is what the scene is doing you know we are pulling jokes over really yeah, sinister but, shit right and, yeah, and but, 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 but now but now it's but but now it's it's hitting home right yeah but that's bringing us back to trope one it's it's like this thing of criticizing things with an ironic overdriven criticizing thing in it yeah that's and, and true. that in my backlash that people take it for real uh, yeah but, so, but I, I remember us having um, um, debates about the total different reception of, of straff towns in in Germany and and the UK for example um, and we had it like like of course we were kind of criticized here in Germany to be over functional and and in the UK this over functionality was being more understood as an as what it is the form that this overemphasing of cliches was was the thing what it's all about and that wasn't the thing like we couldn't do it yeah. but but that was the goal to do it or the aim yeah. and that's the same with it, it maybe even with lyrics like by and torture kill so that they are so weirdly overemphasizing this megalomaniac godlike power idea over human's life or something including some kind of of sexual connotation in it mm. i suppose um that some people who don't have the same idea of norms take it as a normal idea that's actually a good point and i feel a little bit weird that now i see something in suicide commander that is actually not okay Krishan. i'm sorry for that I'm, I'm just such a mild character i'm so pro <laughs> <laughs> actually actually in this in this context it, it would be uh, the totally right thing to do to to, to talk more about uh, uh, women in in in, in goth and industrial lyrics and uh, uh for that it would be really cool to to bring up uh, a contribution by uh, the Delta mode. X just told me that I'm doing it wrong. Um, yeah, the, the, the menu says things, you know, but but I'm reading stuff and, and we just scribbled this together quickly. Um, we, have, we have another one that is actually way, way, way closer to uh, to um, to bind torture kill, and that's Porno Queen by Centron. Um, somebody read it for us uh, as we kindly requested it, and we got this amazing performance of uh, Paratronics guest DJ Gabba Gandalf. Ho ho! Hello everyone! My name is DJ Gabba Gandalf. I'm a lovely friend from Schaftanz. Missy and Jörg, they asked me we can piss off. if I can read the most beautiful track I know. It is actually one of the biggest love songs I know myself and I love it a lot. And I'm happy to read you the poem, the lyrics, 
auf Centron Porno Queen. Enjoy. Suck my dick. Suck my motherfucking dick. Gagging, bis sie fast erstickt. Bückt sich, bis sie Boden spürt. Hart und kalt, wenn sie sich wehrt. Wir weiden uns am Schmerz. Ficken hart und ohne Herz. Wir scheißen auf Moral. Sie will es nur anal. Meine kleine Porno Queen, sie lässt alle Schwänze stehen, peitscht mit Worten meine Gier, ich fix sie wie ein Tier. Meine kleine Porno Queen, sie Lässt alle Schwänze stehen, peitscht mit Worten meine Gier, ich fix sie wie ein Tier, wie ein Tier. Captain Morgan sticht ins See, sabbert in ihr Dekolleté, fließt in ihren feuchten Schoß. Und macht mich mächtig groß. Meine kleine Porno Queen, sie lässt alle Schwänze stehen. Peitscht mit Worten meine Gier. Ich fix sie wie ein Tier. Meine kleine Porno Queen, sie Lässt alle Schwänze stehen, peitscht mit Worten meine Gier, ich fix sie wie ein Tier, wie ein Tier. This was the masterpiece Porno Queen by Centron. I hope you enjoyed it and I wish you a lot of fun tonight. See you soon. Das war DJ Gabba Gandalf. Uh, Christian, you, you, you're live mixing Centron, right? Um, yes, but I'm also live mixing Nazareth, so it's not a very exclusive thing to do. <laughs> but <laughs> but so cool. may, maybe, maybe we can talk about uh, feelings on, music? On, <laughs> on, on porn music. <laughs> What kind of feelings? <laughs> Is it a pro or do, con statement? Uh, do they feel? Uh, yes, they, they feel. And they are, in a, in a weirdly thing, they are rather pro persons. They're really nice persons to hang out. Uh, yeah, I, I met them many years of ago. And that was, it was su it super, super nice. Beautiful people, uh, actually. So, uh, so, so they got a obviously uh, whatever kind of fetish bdsm thing going on on, on on a sectional level which is okay and they're obviously and for everyone seeable they got a strong relation to their especially male bodies um so I it 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 might it might lead to a kind of role model show there mm. which i think isn't there as obvious as it is in the lyrics because i guess the male parts of the band get the same feeling of them being an object that sort of makes sense i, I mean also if they got a female singer maybe the lyrics would be the other way around it, absolutely uh, but, but, but also i think uh, uh, this this track is, is very interesting as an intermediate between the one we heard before and the one we are going to do next because yeah. um uh, uh, 
it is actually about uh, uh, some sort of a sexuality that is attainable and in some sort of way positive. I mean, the things that are happening there seem to be in some sort of um, framework of consent. You know, yep. So, 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 so someone, real. someone's porno queen, and and you know, and 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 they're talking about things that they like to do, right? Yeah, and and it it seems to be like like a real thing that is happening. It's like a role play mindset thing that is happening. It, it's not an abusive idea or something. It, it's more like, of course, sexuality has always a, a context of power or my power control and all Absolutely. that thing. Absolutely. Um, so, so it's displaying nothing abusive in it, or so. Yeah, this 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 one is simply, you know, out of the sphere of normativity, just because of this dude likes stuff that other people find to be a little bit obnoxious, right? Yeah, and, and I guess that people find it, they find it obnoxious because they are taught to find it obnoxious. It, it it's like, it's like a kind of framework we see in every porno movie. Yeah. It, it, it's like a normal thing on the, uh, not because it's in the internet, uh, but it's kind of a normal thing. It's like a normal fantasized or even real thing in, in bedrooms we don't see. And, so, and, and per per perhaps, you know, more people are uh, watching this stuff on Pornhub as it is happening in this song, but they are not openly talking about it. Yeah, and, and it's like, it, it's kind of a normal thing, actually. I, I don't think it's, it's it's that abnormal to have. Brian, um, I mean, oh, did, did you ever listen to that song before? No, and unfortunately, I couldn't hear the lyrics on. Ah, oh, damn my it! It didn't it didn't go here. through. Yeah, no, because that's uh, okay. we we here in the room couldn't hear it too because I, I don't know what's what what was with with this video. It it goes on on stream, but it refuses to go into my speakers. It's censorship. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's censorship. Right. It's, censorship. Nah, it's, it's device acquisition, most likely. At least that's how we do it on Space Cash. But it's essentially like a BDSM sort of track thing, yeah? And yeah. it's not even so no, bdsm no, no, no. Huh? I don't no, know. I didn't no, hear the lyrics, I, I, I don't like, think aren't so. Aren't there like a thousand of those? Like, it's, it's just, it's just like you know, I, 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 I stick like my dick here lead. and I stick my dick there, and then, and then you, you gag. Suck that dick. Yeah. It, it, well, it, it sounds like a Tuesday night for me, man. Exactly. Right. It's just you know we we are we are we we are not as schedule. used in, in in pop music let's say to talk about that right <laughs> right I mean yeah it's I mean isn't that why people gravitate towards industrial anyway because they're into weird shit absolutely and uh, I mean in in this in this context uh, the scene is even doing something that I totally understand for me because it gives people this uh, little bit of more freedom that they don't have at the supermarket counter or something like that because they can say that and they can be that in a club and then they can look like that and that, that, that's actually cool. And they can relate to it like, like okay it's not that unnormal bizarre or something because there are people on stage with their authority because they're on a stage uh, telling us the same thing. Yeah absolutely. So I, I don't see anything weird actually in it because yeah. it's not a setup like whatever bind, torture and kill where something is happening that's far out of my whatever idea of norm or, or moral codices or what, whatever we want to call it. Yeah. But um, then, 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 then we have another example for that. This is actually going uh, into in, into a slightly uh, different direction, because um, there we are going more into that direction of I'm a vampire, and uh, uh, the women that I want do not want me. Not sure why. Maybe because of the lack of heartbeat, but I am not entirely sure. It could also be because of you know uh, the tex the toxic nature of the relationship portrayed, but. Um, Let's let's first uh, um, listen to the words. They are beautiful, at least the way they are recorded. Thank you. Let it roll, X. I met you in the darkness. You shivered and you cried. You looked so pretty with tears in your eyes. You tried to touch my hand. I carried you away. I thought that I could hold you. But you left me all alone. 
He disappeared in the darkness of the night. I wanted to follow you, but something stopped me. Was this a dream of a fallen angel? It must have been an angel with broken wings. And I can feel your soul of ice. You hide behind yourself, behind these lies. You became a creature of masquerade. It's your bleeding heart you hate. You're building a wall of confusion and lies. Nobody can hear your silent cries. But when you sleep, you dream of me and I kiss you in your dreams. And by the way, oh, hi. <laughs> okay, that's perverted. Th that's that's absolutely perverted, right? Because you know, at at, at Centron, you know, pe pe people are people are fucking, and then they obviously enjoy themselves while doing that. And then here we have that thing of of I, I think I think you just, just just said that, right? Actually, I think you should be different. You are a creature of masquerade, and you are hiding yourself behind these lies that are actually your life, sort of, right? Yep, that's. That's kind of weird, actually, for me to process, because it's. I don't know. X Hi. Take over. <laughs> yeah, it's. It, so, it's um, I've been. Ah. I feel uncomfortable with this lyrics. I'm sorry <laughs> to say. <laughs> I've been uh, behind the scenes most of the time, but uh, I actually did some research about this very song. If I can find it. Maybe Brian can share some thoughts about his emotional state now. <laughs> Just in general or as, as it relates to... to Maybe Brian. topic related to the uh, heard lyrics and skip the part with a high, which is easy to... <laughs> we, we played with them once at one of the Kinetic Festivals and uh, the dude was getting ready and he had like the vampire hair and the contact lenses. But he was still wearing a shirt with Stewie from Family Guy on it, <laughs> and th that blew my mind just to, to see the uh, the like that halfway through the transformation stage. Um, yeah, I mean, they're called Blue Angle, right? Blood Angel, if if or if you're uh, not fluent in German, so you you, you kind of know what you're getting into. Um, yeah it's, uh, yeah i don't know is he is he he's got like superpowers in the song but then he kind of doesn't um i i don't know if he's if he's uh the hero or the victim in this track isn't it all about this whole metaphorical thing of of being different and the other people are kind of caught in themselves and they, they should free themselves to be as different as you feel to be different because you already had this right, moment mean, of being whatever a, a vampire or get a different <laughs> mindset or something and and so you're you are free to be what you want to be but the other people do suffer because they aren't free I, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't relate it to to um, um, the people in blue angle as persons actually as as blue angle is a highly artificial thing so it it is really more about the personas than about the real people behind it so so everything is I guess based on this role of isn't it really isn't it really called master of death or something his his stage persona I'm not or did sure. we just make fun Honestly. of it and, and, <laughs> and thought about it. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe someone in the comments can tell us at some point. No. Uh, what I did here is I did some research into medieval love poetry, which in German is called Minnesang. In English, it's called courtly love. And I found a lot of parallels between this and Blutenger, namely the medieval courtly love and the poetry around it uh, is always aimed at an object of affection that is unattainable and uh, at the same time strongly idealized and put on a pedestal. 
Um, but instead of the traditional faraway princess that you get in uh, medieval poetry, Chris Poe is, of course, describing the object of his affections as otherworldly beings like vampires or angels or vampire angels <laughs> <laughs> to accentuate that. Um, we, 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 have, we have a couple of, of understanding problems in the, in the, in ah. the audience. Can you, can you please uh, uh, emphasize the difference between uh, Courtney Love and Courtney oh. Love? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so apparently I'm supposed to tell you that Courtney Love, the person, is not the same as courtly love, which is love at the court in medieval times. <laughs> I'm very sorry if this was not clear. <laughs> so our first thing is uh, the un unattainable, strongly idealized uh, subject of the poetry a second characteristic is that there is a strong focus on the physical beauty of said person and uh, the desire that this elicits in the poet, which, of course, uh, you can very much see in Blutengel lyrics. However, they never get explicitly sexual and uh, since the subject is unattainable, they also never actually have sex. And the situation, both in the medieval poetry and in Blutenger, is the source of internal conflict. You know, Chris describes his sexual desire in terms of sin and temptation. Another cool example of uh, Blutenger lyrics where Chris expresses his desire for an idealized, unattainable lady in rather flowery language where he strongly focuses on her physical beauty and the emotional pain that this causes him. Uh, you can also look at Black Roses. I was addicted to her smile. So much temptation in her eyes. I loved the way she touched me. Her beauty made me weak. She gave me so much pleasure she promised everything. I know that she was lying, but I can't resist. A moment of silence for the black roses in Chris's heart, please. No, no, no silence, never silence. <laughs> to be honest, no silence, I, I, never I silence. don't see the whole, especially in black roses, I don't see the whole gothy context apart from the presentation of it. Like not your presentation, but but the blood anger, you know, a master of death thing, because it sounds like a normal um, um, love song that we get in a normal pop scheme. Um, do all women lie all the time, or is this just a goth scene thing? It's can, not, can, a, it's can not you, a smart you, question. You, you as a you, you as a woman, a woman, can, can you can you maybe? We eat hot chip that? and lie. <laughs> All the time, just every day, just just nonstop. I I want to yeah. I want to <laughs> just call out that the, the the chat room has decided that uh, vampire incels exist, and that's just <laughs> making my heart happy. Uh, okay, so, can uh, someone fill me in, in on the vampire incels? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, just what you were saying, like these uh, they try and they can just never never connect with uh you know other lady vampires or something like that it's it's uh three incel culture in, in vampire world in these in these song lyrics sometimes okay, can, can we estimate the, the, the circumference of chris paul's wrists then um jörg just asks if that means if, if we can uh estimate the circumference of chris paul's wrists uh, I don't that's know like a big maybe incel thing might be a very stalwartedly wristed man i'm just uh <laughs> We're, we're, we're hashing it out in the chat room now, and I, I oh. wanted to give a little screen time to that, that concept. Just a bunch of Definitely. angry vampires on the computer talking about how other vampires don't like them. <laughs> on the computer? I always thought it was kind of interesting, in, um, especially in Blood Angle lyrics, um, that they use the common concept of uh, darkness and light a mm -hmm. lot like like you're in yeah. the darkness and i lead you into the light which is totally stupid if you're a mm -hmm. fucking vampire 
come into maybe your it's, life. Maybe it's no, kind right. of a suicide, suicide idea with romanticism in it. If if a vampire leads you into the light, the vampire goes away. Um, but I don't know. I just wanted to point it out because I always find it kind of funny Hello. when when Blood Angle is trying to lead someone into the light. Um, this might actually be an expression of the fact that they can't be together because if Chris is a vampire and he needs to come into the light, that's not a thing he can do because he's but a vampire. But he wants to. But he wants to, but oh, he can't. He can't. That's sad. That's, that's, sad. that's deep. That makes me cry blood tears. Yeah. But, uh, you know. Mission accomplished. They write some good songs. <laughs> <laughs> we had a lot of depth to stuff. Yeah. Um, essentially, essentially, we have, we have one thing left, right? Um, but did we talk about the female role in in those Blood Angle lyrics enough to um, make it a, a special trope? They uh, Most of these songs seem to be about women that are very passive or the ones that I can recall right now, which is in fact also a thing that you find in the medieval poetry because it, you often don't really get a response from the person that this is aimed at. It, women this is, are, men do, right? Quark just yep. says, uh, women yes. are, men do. So. Which I'm not a fan of, but... I, I'm, I'm, I'm just... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that's what actually the whole blood angle concept is about. It's kind of an, an, a mm -hmm. musical idea, like a music theater idea, based on 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 the master of death in the center of it, mainly singing, and then got a bunch of uh, women around uh, uh, dancing, doing some whatever stuff with butterfly wings and stuff like that, and and some of them singing too. Not but broken it's, angel it, wings. Not broken angel wings, maybe. But but on stage you got technically mm -hmm. like like for for stage presenters for the show like like mm -hmm. one male and a lot of female actors. Um, in, in the in very much in this context, uh, I, th I think Ollie uh, surgeon in the chat uh, just uh, brought uh, the very interesting concept of the ornamental woman. This is indeed correct. You also find a lot of uh, stuff in Nachtma, Blutengel and other promotional contexts where they drape some half-naked lady on their promo materials when often said lady has nothing to do with the actual project. Which I find That's interesting. True. But what does it mean is it driven by market marketing purposes? Are, are other bands thinking they are mainly get bought by men? It all looks like it's aimed at straight dudes, so I would guess yes. Mm. I, I talked about this with uh, so someone I earlier. EDM. I I talked about this with someone earlier that all of the stuff makes queer women not feel very welcome because it's not aimed at them, even though there's yeah. often pictures of two women kissing and stuff like that. Yeah, but, but that's more for, for, for a masculine delight. It's more about a lesbian fantasy. Uh, yeah, and in this, in this context, uh, our, our good friend Faderhead, uh, uh, just, just uh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm, I'm quoting him wrong now from, from the chat, but um, the, the, the thing is, uh, women are getting more ornamental the better they look than the frontman of the band. <laughs> Thank you, Sabi. That's very insightful. That's very insightful. That's so I never put any females beside me because it's an easy win for them. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi, you won. <laughs> Do you feel ornamental? <laughs> Just of being there? No, I'm doing stuff. My next words aren't addressed to queer women. <laughs> X, you're so ornamental. Obviously, who wouldn't? Um, mm. I mean, uh, Brian obviously doesn't need this, right? <laughs> Stop. When, <laughs> I don't know. when we met, you had a kind of strong female counterpart in Gothic, so, huh? Yeah, no, I always. On I mean, this uh, midnight bowling alley in Racine. Yeah, that I was. Ha ha ha! That 
that was a long time ago. <laughs> that was hilarious. Oh, God. That was the best. Yeah, we got paid in beer and free bowling. That was Wisconsin yes, as shit. Yes, light bowling. Uh, yeah. Eskil loved it. Oh, that was... Oh, God, that's the best picture of, like, Eskil <laughs> in one lane is bowling very Swedish and perfectly like a machine, and I'm in the next lane like a giraffe trying to drink out of a fucking river. But... Um, <laughs> Did you wear a white suit? Because <laughs> a white suit while blacklight bowling might become a nice fantasy to put in the next a vampire driven song. Yeah, but I mean that was that was that was I was my girlfriend at the time oh. in, in the band. It wasn't like I was uh, you know hiring stage models or something. I've really never had the compulsion to to do that like you know just put like a babe on besides myself on the cover <laughs> of, a, of an album um so it's an instinct i don't have i get it like you know uh that's you know uh an advertising principle of of time immemorial is is uh yeah draping your your what is whatever you're selling uh yeah pretty much excels but um yeah i don't know it's it's sort of in one ear and out the other for me because i've seen it so often at this point but uh it does it does get a you know a little silly it gets boring after a while yeah it depends on your overall level of boringness in your life <laughs> yes <laughs> that's damn true um this is our last point, you know, actually words don't matter. Yeah, um, speaking of uh, things that are pointless, we have one final trope for you. Namely that words don't really matter as long as the music and the vibe still give you that feeling of uh, Hey, everything is shit, we are edgy, let's burn some churches, God is dead. And uh, to introduce that, we have Pong. By Biomechanimal. Well, hello there. How are you all doing? My name is Matt from Biomechanimal. I've been asked today to perform a dramatic reading of Pong by Eisenfunk. Are you all sitting comfortably? Good. Then let's begin. Let us play Pong. Let's play Pong. Let's play. Let us play. Let's play Pong. Let's play Pong. Let's play Pong. Let us play Pong. Let's play Pong. Let's let's play Pong. Let us, let us play Pong. Let's play Pong. 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 Let's, let's play Pong. Play again. Play again. Let's play Pong. Let's play Pong. Let's play Pong. Let's play Pong. Pong. Thank you very much. This was very good. 
I cried. Brilliant. And came. I, I mean, you essentially immediately feel like that you need a drink, right? <laughs> and it needs to be a golden one. Okay. Hell. <laughs> How does that make you feel, Brian? Uh, you know, um, it's like it's the Pong game inside, and that ball is sort of me oscillating between the two sides of my own personality, ultimately achieving my own high score. Oh, and I thought it would be something like your, um, like a metaphorical picture for your communication between your left and your right brain. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's good. It's that's like good. it's and like the ball is something like oscillating between your ratio and the emotional side. Totally. There you go. And uh, you know, like the, uh, the the we weave the paddles through our life experiences, and uh, they 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 oscillate more rapidly based on our self mastery or something like that. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. Pong is deep, yo. Pong is deep. Pong, Pong is, is deep. very deep. Pong, Pong is like a playground for your own thoughts. It's like this. Right. Um, it's like this empty page in a book at the end, which leaves space for your own ideas. And, and not only is it Pong, the lyrics go, "Let us play Pong. We we need to have this resolution through conflict in our life. Let us play Pong." Yeah. Let, let's resonate. There you go. Mm -hmm. uh, Inside of us are two wolves. <laughs> they both want to play Perfect. video games <laughs> yes and the video game they choose is pong and the soundtrack pong by eisenfunk um we both have video game songs and so when this song broke like some fucking genius would post it on my facebook every six seconds <laughs> so like <laughs> I, I i got I, hey, Brian, have you seen this song about? Yeah, I saw it. I do. I saw it. And it's a kick ass track. I just I, I had to overload on it uh, or I did overload on it um, through no fault of their own. Uh, these guys borrowed my keyboard once at Resistance Festival, like I think the first one. And they were very nice and returned the keyboard and said, thanks. And that's that's the only time I've ever talked with Isaac. Pong. That's kind of an equipment pong. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> I um I even wrote down on my little clipboard that you also make industrial about video games and that we could talk about that but yeah. obviously you already did. Well, I mean, it's a it's a different thing. Like I get into it lyrically pretty heavy if mm -hmm. if I could um yeah. you know, like tons of words in every every bar and uh these guys i mean that was sort of biomechanical mechanimals bit there's uh just sort of reading their more trimmed lyrics as a full poem but like it kind of works better i'm not sure like the whole lyrics of <laughs> let us play pong and you know it's reflecting the minimalism of that game in a certain context and i like to try to reach some sort of emotional truth if i can get bougie about it with video games as sort of the canvas but i think they achieved their goal of of making a uh an iconic let's face it uh dance track out of two sounds or however, three sounds or yes. however much pong that the original pong game has in it and and i really like that that it's a pure dance track it's, mm -hmm. it's yeah. like taking away yeah. any context of movie samples and everything just brought down to two strips and, and a point yeah. flipping around. It's a skill I wish screen. I had. Yeah. Like, I, I'm just listening to like the first two Gothicals albums. I'm, gonna, I'm essentially scream rapping. I'm just words were like 16th note words. Yeah. And it, it might as well just be zero because no one can understand what the fuck I'm saying. If, if I had, if I could just like, you know, reduce it down into let us play Pong. Uh, like just that sort of that that crystallized realized sort of punch in the face mm -hmm. uh you know i'd probably have a lot stronger body of work the to be fair the games that you uh sing about are a lot more elaborate than pong well i mean <laughs> it'd be difficult to get less elaborate than pong but yeah uh, true true they have they have like a space invaders track 
that's mm-hmm. cool. I obviously have oh. Gal get tattooed on my body. So like that was another one where people mm-hmm. are like, Brian, have you seen? Yeah, dude, I have the CD. I know, I know, <laughs> I know what songs they, they wrote. <laughs> I didn't invent video Who games. But... No, nah, it's all good. It's all good. But but it keeps interesting that that a song like this about a, mm-hmm. a super proto early video gaming idea, which is a pure gaming idea. Um, then becomes a massive club hit in in a scene, which on the other hand is is mainly driven by being different and being deeper than other scenes, mm. and and being so deep that they even dislike themselves, mm. and, and 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 then you get this contradictionary thing of a pong, which is kind of awesome actually. But, but isn't it also a um, tradition? It is. It is also a little bit conservative, embracing a, a tra- tradition. Even even music wise, it's totally '90s driven. So, yeah, I, I know I should be the last the, one. The pong, I think, also ties into the idea of cyber goth, which was a lot more popular at the time. Yeah, that's where true. Where they're fascinated by all kinds of technology, both old and new. I mean, cyberpunk is a relatively old concept, even though it's about some dystopian future, usually. Mm-hmm. Also, well, the, Pong follows the, distant year the Was was this whole cyber industrial idea somehow connected to cyberpunk on on an ideological level? Good question. Or was it just the name? Cause cyber was somehow sounding well. I think, I think it was oh yeah, I was mean, it, 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 to, to me it felt like, like it was mainly a dance movement. It, it's like an an old rave culture idea of often pure dance movement because you got this dance collectives doing dance stuff and yeah and all but that. they also did this whole thing uh, uh that that was very much about you know wearing these 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 gas masks uh, uh yeah, yeah. like um uh, uh try, trying to, to trying to to pretend that they are physically altering themselves with technology, have like plastic hair and shit like that. Yeah, that's I, kind I of think, I think, I think that, that that's that's a little bit cyberpunkish, right? I, I think I think it's definitely in there. Uh, ma- uh, maybe yeah, not in any it? sort of an elaborate level, yeah, but 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 I, it's but it's definitely visible to me. Yeah, this is whole okay. low life, high tech thing yeah. that, that that you have in there you know uh, yeah we have high-tech stuff and, and high-tech garments and high-tech materials and everything is plastic but actually life is shit and we need to wear a fucking respirator so isn't it isn't it a bit like, like an elaborated more elaborated form of, of this whole man machine concept of, of craft work crops and and now on, on on onto a digital thing with a self-morphing i i don't know scheme. i would like to ask the dance floor gladiators for that because they were doing dancing crews like oh, that doing... yes, yeah, yes 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 because perfect. because they, they, they should know maybe maybe we should do this uh in, in a later on installation of this format maybe and and then and then talk with them about uh yeah because i know most musicians doing whatever cyber electro or whatever it was called as strong at that time were mainly focused on doing music, like without any a lot of conceptual thoughts. Most most talks I had were kind of tech talks about music technology, like oh, how do I get a bass drum that kicks two uh, percent harder than their fucking kick drum? Uh, yeah, but I mean, uh, I, I guess uh, since since technology moved on and and we can do all sorts of media production in our yeah. home now, I think uh, uh, the scope of, of any sort of artistic production is is wider today than it was like I don't I know hope. even in the nineties, um, or even even in the in, in the first decade of of this uh, of, of the century. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but um, essentially, you know, we we, we came from play, playing pong, you know, to to ideas of you know the the, the binary between uh, Apollonian and Dionysian ideas and stuff like that, and uh, right? I mean, beautiful. Friedrich Nietzsche would have loved this song. <laughs> I mean, I'm, all, I'm always happy when it comes to Greek mythology. Yeah. As principles, it sounds so good. And 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 then and then on the other hand, of course, it, it might also just just be about you know pong, 
uh, and uh, and I, I think I think Van said that on the on, on the chat is essentially uh, to to some degree uh, uh, Matt squeezed juice from a rock in his video, um, and 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 maybe and maybe this is something that we are doing in a lot of situation, and, and and actually I don't even think that this is that this is not honorable. I mean, um, if you are bringing lyrics that uh, will make. Uh, people want to squeeze juice from their drug and uh, if it is their own juice I mean it's good juice right yeah the the, the yeah the juice is kind of innocent <laughs> the juice is innocent <laughs> fuck that <laughs> it's like the same with an audience dancing to it or something. Is, isn't if, there if, a smoothie brand that is innocent yeah I mean, there is some I guess oh sorry for that um, <laughs> I'm not paid by them unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> But it's the same, like like even the song pong is is kind of innocent or, or independent from the people doing it, or even independent from the intention of the people doing it. So yeah. if if you find some deepness in it, it might sound funny in a way, <laughs> um, or, or even like overinterpreted or something. Um, but I can assure you there are people thinking about it that way. The squeeze is close. I, there's there's uh, speaking yeah, speaking of Jews actually yes. um, there, there's there's one Captain obvious Captain obvious he is speaking heart. of Jews <laughs> um, speaking of Jews um, there, there there is one song uh, where I had um, some sort of a situation about one line in it where. Um, uh, there was some sort of a brief confused discussion um, on uh, whether this line is actually uh, metaphorical or sexual in a, in a more, more more direct way and, and this amused me to to no end for for many years um uh, especially after um after this uh, talk about that uh, you know wh why are you talking about golden showers is and and um and because of that, I would like to read one for you, which is a uh, Funkervogt, Final Thrill. And for that, I'll go into my reading position. Actually, this is a hard one. Another land, another culture with a different kind of life. What was once forbidden belongs here to social life. While you travel to these countries, you can live a thousand lives in a castle somewhere in Britain or a temple down in Asia. Give me a golden shower. Give me a new thrill, give me this experience and give me the last kill. Give me almighty power, give me a strong will, give me a new life and give me the final thrill. Hatred, boredom and the lies, plenty of false moral rules, breaking them in many ways, you don't belong to these fools. Being sneaky unpredictable, condemned and rejected, but you live, you live your life. So in all honesty, um, I, I never quite understood what this actually means, um, because uh, um, there are people living in castles. I don't know who that is, except for possibly Chris Pohl. Um and, and there are people living in temples. I didn't know that people are living in temples. I thought you go there for prayer, and then suddenly people are pissing on each other. Um, I always found these lyrics to be really, really very much confusing. And, and when I asked questions about them, uh, the person that I was talking to in some backstage room I don't even it's, it's a long time ago um, we're about as confused 
about the fact that I am confused by the lyrics because um, uh, uh, other people see something very particular and very understandable and graspable in them that, that I sort of never got. Um, then again, uh, uh, Final Thrill, I think, is, is uh, quite uh, a, a track that was actually played a lot. It was played a lot. Christian, what would you say? I don't know. I don't Not know. sure? Oh. Uh, oh, oh. Uh, um, uh, I was I was just uh, uh, yelling over through that room to to Christian who was on the balcony. Uh, he gave me a very interesting uh, hint. He said he never listened to that track until the day when Brian actually pointed the track out to him. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know. That, that that's what he says. Uh, when did that actually happen? I don't want oh. to blame you. It might be also Jim Smith from Metropolis who pointed it out to okay. me. Okay. So. Well, no, I mean, I'll take credit for it. You can take credit for it. I, th I think <laughs> you should totally take credit for it because this is making this program so much more interesting. Fantastic. <laughs> and I, I, I need to read the lyrics so oh, no, no, then, to, to maybe find some. Um, elaborate um, deepness in it. Wait, wait, wait a second. I'll give you the actual lyrics because uh, this is coke for my ass. This is this is actually a great song that I oh, like we a lot. Oh, to Faderhead. Okay. Yes, yes. Co coke for my ass by 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 Faderhead is in comparison uh, to much of the stuff that we listened uh, uh, before. Actually, a feminist work. I think because uh, you, you know it's 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 about groupies having fun, and and you know do, do, doing cocaine with fader head right it's it's awesome uh, and 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 it's not about these people that are sitting at the bar and are not getting laid and are then frustrated and listen to blut engel <laughs> but, but maybe i'm over interpreting I, I don't know you know but but we are all squeezing juice from the rock right i i would like to be able to i still haven't had a hit yet so <sighs> to I be honest be. this funk of folk lyrics are unbelievably conservative yeah because you know I, I i see a glimpse of oh out there there are other people in other countries that do not behave like us perhaps we should invade them <laughs> yeah but not really because there's, there's all this kind of strong fascination in it but it's like like it's like a lot of um, wealthier people traveling to other countries doing some well-paid trips and then just see the highlights like yeah, those and castles the... and those temples on in Asia and, and, and then they get from some movies some ideas about being in a temple in Asia what it means like to be a Buddhist monk or something or even to be um, uh, like Queen Elizabeth because you see it uh, on Netflix or something and and then just projecting that this is a form of an everyday life that it's normal in that country this is all kind of weird and and it especially the last two blocks with this hatred, boredom and the lies, blah, blah, blah. Um, and being sneaky, unpredictable, never is forgiven. And so that, that's all like manifesting an art of what is right and what is wrong, which is super weird to me. I'm sorry to say this is this is so normative. It's extremely, it, it, yeah. it, it sounds liber liberal, but it's more like liberal. I don't know how to pronounce it. It's, it's something we call libertaire. That's the same thing in French, right? No, it's, it's not the same. That there, there's being liberal and there's being libertaire, which is a libertarian. It, it, it's more like this idea of of a total freedom to go everywhere and, and, and watch at people like in a zoo and then think like, oh, yeah, that's kind of cool what they do there at the temple. That's pretty weird. Oh, they got those orange things. Oh, they are uh, colored by the, I don't know what it is. Is this actually something from dead people or something that made it orange? It, um, Exactly, but but it, it 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 all looks like a passive TV show, and, and then in the end you got those moral super Christian ideas about oh don't be sneaky, because it's never been forgiven. Oh, I didn't read it that way. Oh oh, I thought never is forgiven. So so you have to do something Maybe instead of not doing something. No, no, no. But, but I think I got it wrong oh, because okay. I'm not very clever. Uh, no, that doesn't mean that I'm clever too. Maybe we are both not clever. Maybe Brian can help us out with it. Br Brian can, can well, somewhere help. in there he gets pissed it, on, right? I think so. I mean, after after he travels to a castle somewhere in Britain or a temple down in Asia, he asks us to give him his golden shower. 
Because it's, right. it's real. Okay, well, th that part, I mean, I, I, I'm not into the particulars of that action, but I always thought that was an interesting thing to put into an industrial song. Like, I don't know, maybe I like getting peed on. Uh, we'll yeah, find out, this, I guess. I'm, I'm not judging people that like getting peed on. This is absolutely okay, right? Because right. we all know... You know, when, when, when you are healthy, urine is sterile, there's nothing bad happening with that. If you're really into that, it's a totally safe thing that well, you can and, do. If you just like and it he's on a vacation, warm. right? Like, he's going to all these countries, and, and people do weird shit when they're on vacation. You're like, ah, as long as I'm here, uh, let's just see I, if I'm mean, out. Just let's just blend in right right <laughs> back, back in the bad old days you know uh, uh <laughs> physicians would would uh, uh uh would figure that you have diabetes by 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 tasting your urine you know uh i, th I think i think we it's true <laughs> It's it's true. I, you know, know, I, I want to know where this is going. Keep going. Yeah, yeah. You know, if if it's sweet, you have some sort of problem with 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 your sugar, right? Obviously, and and uh, sure. and, and then and people and then people would know. And and, and only today we have this uh, complete absurd uh, ickiness about bodily fluids. So uh, okay. I am absolutely not judging people that like being peed upon. That's totally okay. The, the thing that I'm not getting is, you know, he's he's like, hey, uh, while you travel to those countries. You can live a thousand lives. Give me a golden shower. I mean, what the fuck, actually? Just take your golden shower. It's just, one of your well, thousand just lives. Just take well, your but he's got shower. a thousand lives. So, like, I got a lot of time to fill. Let's just see if I mean to getting peed on. That's that's actually number two in this song for me. Uh, no, number one is where he says a temple down in Asia, like it's the corner store in Alabama or something, and not half the. Let's go down to Asia, that that wacky whole half the globe. But um, that's yeah. Yeah, down in Asia, uh, but, right? I mean, even, you know, even, even that down sort of implies something of global south or something okay. like that, right? All right. So, I mean, you, if it's well, not. Well, it's actually not even the south. No, an industrial it's even examination of. <laughs> Most of Asia, correct. This yeah, is absolutely in the northern hemisphere, and it's, it's where uh, they I mean, practice sort of home farm medicine, like tasting the urine to determine uh, the absence or presence of diabetes. I, so I, I think it. I, not not just that. I, I figured I figured out only a couple of weeks ago that there are uh, some um, that there are some uh, uh, tribes around in Russia where it was uh, typical that the poorer people would drink uh, uh, the the urine of richer ones uh, so they can enjoy the drugs that they took. Wasn't there a thing with Donald Trump getting peed on in a hotel room, or was it something with British? Oh people? man, this song's got legs. It's just it's all over in the a hotel place. in Moscow yeah. or something. Yeah, that was that I was like the in Moscow. Yes. I don't know if he was listening to this song at the time, but uh, you know that that would certainly add another element to it. Yeah, maybe it's more like a prophetic song from Funkafolk. The, the the thing is, uh, the, the claim right. was made that 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 this is actually not about being, but it's about you know. Well, but what? Uh, yeah, you know the the golden shower. It is gold raining down on you. You know, like um, oh, like, like this, like this little um, like, like the girl from 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 the from from the yeah, fairy tale. Yeah. You know, where, where the gold is is falling down, and and you know she it collects it with shirt. her uh, in, in, into her muscle oh, yeah, shirt, into, into her muscle shirt. EBM muscle shirt, and and so she's actually not, you know, stoned dead by the golden coins that are fucking heavy, but instead, you know, in some sort of way collects them and is really happy about that, and it's not about peeing. Because it's just a, so the whole thing is a funny thing about the uselessness of lyrics, because people are buying it anyway. Really, it doesn't matter. It, it, does, it doesn't matter, because... because um, then it's kind of deep. Uh, we... We 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 actually even discussed this here, right? Yeah. I, I mean, I mean, in, in in this in this way, this this song has definitely some sort of success, I guess. It obviously, did. Oh, Funker Folk has been a kind of successful band. I don't know when this song was written, but but the header phase before I jumped this really into this old. industrial thing, like whatever, two thousand four, two thousand three, two thousand four. No, it's still something. going, man. Last album was awesome. <laughs> I haven't heard it. Thumbs up from me. Um, I, 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 also, okay, I, I mean, Funkafu gave me a lot. That the biggest thing that that uh, that uh, they gave to me was actually you, Brian, uh, uh, rhyming F H zero on Tragic Hero. <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the. That's a okay, that three level pun. That's one of the best I ever did. Thanks for reminding me of that. 
uh, did, um, you, you did a lot of uh, very good lines. I read a lot of them. But, well, um, so lyrics th do th matter. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Brian. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course, of, of course, they do matter, but they don't necessarily matter. You can also, you know, produce absolute nonsense, and 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 still, uh, we are able to squeeze juice from the rock. Mm. Thank you, some of for that this juice. metaphor, by I the way. I need some of that juice. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll have Christian produce the song and squeeze some juice on it for me. But give me some of that juice. Whenever. Awesome, man. <laughs> Whenever awesome. you want. I'm, I'm there. I had always fun producing your stuff, actually. Because, uh, oh, awesome, awesome. Of course, because it was always fun to figure out the lyrics, actually. Because, <laughs> of course, when you're producing a song, at, at some point you're losing track of lyrics because you use right. music uh, or the vocals as an instrument. And, and and then you're going back like, but what the hell is he actually saying? Right. <laughs> Which was well, kind of a fun I, thing. That's why why I loved um, straight up utter time so much. Oh well, thank you. It's it's what it's became the new the new Konami code for me, man. Uh, <laughs> Cat Orga twelve in the chat room says juice from the piss rock, which. Uh, I think that's a single for one of us. Juice from up. the piss rock is really a single. Yep. Okay. Cool. Thanks. And That's piss rock sounds like a genre. <laughs> <laughs> piss rock. Jesus. It's even maybe a mode. It's like uh, F flat or something. Mm. It's piss mode. <laughs> the, the piss mode. Arsch dur und piss mode. Yeah. yeah. We have C sharp and because C sharp in German is called cis, like. Oh, F sharp is fizz. Uh -huh. So P sharp would be piss. piss. But there's no key that is P, sadly. Genius. We need to, no. we need to invent one. That's Yo, but, but in the, the key of, the key key of P got 3.14 hertz and kilohertz. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's deep. Because wow. that's so Apollonian. This, this 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 is beautiful. It will absolutely sound shit, but but actually, you know, I'm gonna blow you know, out your cross uh, 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 circular, My mind is yeah, uh, a pie circular scale. Yeah, it's a track we don't need to produce. We just need to talk about it to sell it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so lyrics do matter, concepts do matter, music doesn't matter at all. Yeah, that's that that's the juice from the piss rock philosophy. Thank you. Who who said this actually? Brian. Well, no, uh -huh, I stole it from uh -huh. Katorga12, if I'm saying your name right. Thank you. Okay, you're in this band. Yes. Sweet, sweet. Excellent. This, this, this is very good. Uh, I mean, um, uh, to talk JFTPR. about... JFTPR. I mean, then, actually, Squoes, uh, then Squoes uh, piss from the piss rock, even before the piss rock was invented. And uh, and 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 she, she she did she did a she did, she did a wonderful original piece that uh, uh, she she did a wonderful original piece. Uh, <laughs> she did it for the world. Ah. <laughs> well, piss. What's wrong with you? Oh my god! Yeah. We are starting a punk band called World Piss. Yeah, rest in piss. <laughs> See a golden shower of future for us. Yeah, we'll yeah, yeah, we're covering Final Thrill for sure. Of course we do. Yeah, yeah it is the golden yeah. shower of corruption. <laughs> oh. Roll it. When I heard there was going to be an industrial poetry slam, I became inspired to write my own poetry. And mine is inspired by Funker Volk's Final Thrill, and their misuse of the term Golden Shower. I have a couple other references to VNV Nation and Angel Spit, so if you can pick up on those, kudos to you. So without further ado, this is my original poem titled The Golden Shower of Corruption. Beloved offshore accounts, taxes are illusion, military industrial complex and political collusion, taking credit for all of the toil, while destroying crops and ruining soil. McMansions filled with gluttonous excess, sitting on land like a disgusting abscess, laundered assets ripe for mismanage and mathematically atoned to their advantage. Numbers, output, 
and giant oil rigs, suffocate humanity and every living thing, extinct numbers of unknown proportion, all falling victim to corporate extortion. Giant stimulus packages and trickle-down economics is nothing more than crooked regonomics. The money stays on top to fund vacations, only for the rich and all their litigations. The burnout is chronic, the cure is narcotic, inebriated enough to stay numb, day in and day out ad nauseum. Rows and men wearing matching gimp suits, down on their knees, tongue out to lick the boots, forced to stand under the golden shower of corruption, war, and the pursuit of power. Fucking great. And here's actually my question that is essentially why is Van not writing everyone's lyrics? Right. Yes. Damn right. Put that on upwork, there you go. Industrial lyricist for hire. <laughs> everyone's very quiet. Yes. Silence. In the woods. The silence of the woods. <laughs> it's beautiful. I, I actually heard, heard a lot of um, um, podcasts about um, the failure of trickle-down economics and that it doesn't work, so I'm a little bit primed and triggered by it. Well, I we're can, all about trickling down here on um, Juice and the wait, wait, wait a minute, I can, I can give you artifacts that you can hold that are going to give you warmth, I think. Oh, okay. I think the golden shower of corruption is trickling down. That sounds beautiful. <laughs> oh, we got capital and the capital. I'm too yes. close to it. <laughs> capital is written with a giant K. Because <laughs> it's a capital K. Of, of course. Y y you know, I've read Piketty. Yeah, I mean. But it's good to hold it in your hand because it's um, um, definitely. It, it gives you a feeling of warmth, right? It gives me a feeling of warmth and the colors of red and white. Give a feeling, feeling of, of warmth leftism. and security. Yes, and, <laughs> and some um, um, shown off intellectuality. Yeah, you know, I, this, this, this year I visited like um, about one, one person uh, in, in, in her home that, that I didn't meet before and she asked me, do you actually need anything when you are arriving? And in jest, I said, I need a leather-bound copy of Das Kapital by Karl Marx. <laughs> and upon arrival, when she opened the door, she gave me this book. And now we are friends. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> So, mm, we have we have one 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 last one I think, um, uh, because uh, uh, you know since since we talked um, uh, a lot about how how dead um, the scene uh, supposedly is, uh, we uh, we put up a, a last one, which is uh, let's say. Uh, how do you call this? Nachwuchsarbeit? Do you know what Nachwuchsarbeit is? Anyone here that knows German and English, which is pretty much everyone in here? But I don't know. You know, uh, y y you need to invest in young people because they're going to do awesome stuff for you. Um, people that are going to continue to bear the torch into the darkness. Um, in To bring light into the future. In this context, uh, please enjoy a haiku by our friend Peanut. Dark Gothic unicorns, twilight sparkles in the sky, rainbow dashes zooming by. Unicorn, hope you like it.
Dun 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 da da dun dun da 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 dun dun. Do do. First of all, I would like to admit that this is better than my average video editing. <laughs> it is. And also, I think um, Peanut did great work here. Thank you, Peanut. This is, um... I really like the unicorn suit. It's a wonderful nod to Dorothy, the unicorn. So. Essentially, now that we learned that music actually doesn't matter because, you know, you can strip it from the work and still we are able to uh, <laughs> squeeze juice from the piss rock. Um, so, so since we learned that all the music, oh, oh, since, since we even learned that, that, all the, that all the samples, all the context really doesn't matter that much, since we learned now that the words don't matter, uh, we can conclude that actually nothing matters and uh, I can end this day, for me at least, being uh, a slightly tipsy, proper German nihilist. All right. Uh, can, I, can I give a plug to the next thing I got to do? Uh, of course. Oh, to, do too, because, you know, in all honesty, I, I would have done that because, you know, um, as, as you as, as you people might see, uh, uh, Brian here is sitting on a couch and, and I actually did some work to make a star field around him. Actually, I stole it, but, but also I put it on a lot of monitors because uh, uh, Brian is also a, a space expert uh, and he's doing a show called Space Couch. That is yes, on uh, very soon. Space Couch starts in 50 minutes. Uh, you are viewing this now on Twitch. Uh, head over to twitch.tv slash Space Couch Show at, uh, well, it'll be three here on the East Coast of the United States uh, in 50 minutes if you're watching this real time. I'll be uh, continuing my interview show, Space Couch, with Angel Spit today. So. If you want to uh, uh, shoot the uh, the proverbial shit or piss rock with Angel Spit, do that at twitch.tv slash Space Couch Show or facebook.com slash Space Couch Show uh, in just 50 minutes. That's pretty soon, Perfect. and I'm sure you will love it. Um, also, uh, we, we, are, we are going to set up a zoom call for i don't know the three five people or whatever who still want to discuss with us um if, if there's still stuff that you really need to talk about i, I hope you don't I, but i don't know you know per, per, perhaps we still need to talk about things like you know um the juice from the piss rock and stuff like that i mean you've raised several points that, that y bear yes. exploring R right uh, if, if you if you like to continue uh, exploring these ideas with us we are going to uh we're going to throw uh, a little link uh, uh, into the chat in a minute, and uh, and and well, yeah, why not? So let's continue in this realms of reality is just fan awesome. fiction. I gotta go. Uh, we we simply uh, use your link, Brian, right? Okay. Because, yeah, you because you're gone anyway, and then we're already wired up. Okay, Actually, well, no, it's going to be terrible. Ah, yes, we are going to use Brian's link because this is going to put us into deep technical comp complicated things uh, and it's going to be fun to resolve them so we're going to give you Brian's link and uh, and it's going to be awesome okay I don't know how that's gonna work but uh, you know push that TV slash. yeah you know <laughs> you stay you leave whatever you do uh, on, on the on, on the zoom channel that you are at the moment on more people will then appear right this is what's going to happen okay okay well, I mean, uh, I, I gotta, I gotta bounce off the, uh, the of, of course. channel in a second. R right, I'm, I'm, ju but, I'm just telling um, you what would happen. I'm, I'm, I'm talking in, in conjunctive. Uh, Conjun conjunctive. 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 I don't Possibly. know. You're a German teacher, that. right? Or I remember you had a kind of. No, uh, no, I used to be ziemlich fließend. Uh, jetzt um, benutze, benutze ich es uh, seltsam. Um, uh, new, new by industrial music. Oh, okay. Uh, you're you're just Germanized by industrial music. Yeah, I know that a lot yeah. of the Stroman industrial bands 
um, use a kind of over-Germanized form of industrial uh, of oh, okay. English language because uh, American people do like it at some form or, or people over here think that they like it. Mm. I don't know if it's a fan fiction idea of the artists being <laughs> fans of their audience, but I don't know. Just cut us. <laughs> All right. This was awesome. Thanks, guys. Brian, seriously, thank you for your patience and for being here and for floating in space with us. Anytime uh, you want me back, man. And uh, uh, I'm, I'd be I'd be glad to have further discussions with you and with with you and and about Jews from the piss rock because I think well, this this is this is among that, the best uh, concepts that I that, that I heard this year. Resistance Festival 2022. We'll yeah, yeah. Awesome. we are so going to do this, right? Don't piss on the couch. <laughs> we are not going to piss on the couch. <laughs> so, um, we will uh, now uh, actually for, for for those that that had enough poetry, we'll raid into Paratronics, um, and uh, uh, for the rest of you, Space Couch in fifteen minutes, at uh, ten minutes now, and uh, uh, yeah, three o'clock. Yeah, on the hour. And, and and the rest maybe wants to hang out in the Zoom call. So thanks a lot. And uh, we are preparing the raid. And when you are raiding into that channel, please tell them about German nihilism and piss from the, no, juice from the piss rock. Take your time, by the way. The pizza, oder? Absolut. Genau. Es tut nichts. Das ist das ist ein bisschen bescheuert. Genau. Also man hat auch so, so ein bisschen. bisschen so genau, genau. Man, man, man kann dem eine Plattheit unterstellen, genau. aber es tut nichts. Aber, aber es ist halt, aber auch so eine gewisse naive Ehrlichkeit.